Last night, OpenAI introduced its first agentic tool called Operator. This is the first in a series of agents that are going to be released in 2025. This is, this is really the beginning of this product. This is the beginning of our step into agents level three on our, on our, on our, on our tiers. Uh, we think this is going to be a big trend in AI and really impact the work people can do, how productive they can be, how creative they can be, what they can accomplish. We'll also have more agents to launch uh, in the coming weeks and months, but uh, that said, we'll talk more later. So excited, just want to show you a demo. Operator is a web-based tool that does your web-related tasks on your behalf. It is an assistant that can follow instructions on the browser. Let's see some examples of what it is capable of. Okay, so I'm going to start with something fairly simple. I'm going to use OpenTable and say, Book me a table for two at Beretta tonight at 7 p.m. So as soon as I type in the query, operator instantiated a completely remote browser. This browser is running in the cloud somewhere. And as you can see, it's already up and running. And my hands are off the keyboard. I'm not typing these things. <laughs> so this is just the AI is clicking around. AI is just things. clicking around. It, it started this browser session. It knew where OpenTable website is, which is opentable.com. As you can see, it's a summarized chain of thought here as well, which is it's gone to the URL, searched for Beretta. OK, it looks like 7 PM isn't available. But you know what? 745 is just fine. fine. So we're going to go do that. So in this case, operator came back. And this is a really good example of task delegation where operator needs help or needs assistance or just wants to ask you something. It'll just come back and you answer that So query. in practice, you wouldn't have had to watch this. You could have just let it go off while you're doing other things. And then it would come back and say, hey, I can't do 7, totally. Yeah. Great. And we're starting with a web app. You'll get notifications, et cetera. When uh, operator moves into mobile, you'll get mobile notifications, much like interactions we do with general apps. Operator has predefined websites to interact with, but it is not limited to them. This agent can look at the screen and use a mouse and a keyboard. So it is a general tool that can interact with every website. But it is optimized and works best with OpenAI partners listed down below. We have also collaborated with various brands like OpenTable, All Recipes, StubHub, Uber, Thumbtack, DoorDash, eBay, Target, to make sure Operator really works well on these websites. But also, we think users will find operator value, very valuable in interacting with these platforms. It seems to be very accurate with its clicks, but probably this struggles with more dynamic designs. OK, so it creates the next sub plan, which is adding eggs and uh, searching for spinach. So it's probably going to search for spinach now. OK, so it clicks on the search bar right there. And it types in spinach. So this loop of taking actions, grabbing screenshots, and creating new sub plans, it just keeps going on until operator decides that it's done with mm -hmm. the task and then it goes back to you. Because the model doesn't receive any extra information about the buttons or even the text on the website, it has to rely on screenshots for everything. And the underlying AI models aren't 100% reliable yet. So the real question is, how good is this agent? We want to remind you that operator is a research preview. It will make mistakes, and it is not perfect. Um, that said, we can look at a few benchmarks and kind of quantify how good operator is right now. So one of the first benchmarks that we're going to look at is called OS World. OS World is an eval that measures how well AI agents navigate common operating systems like Linux. Uh, on this task, Kua gets a 38.1% score, mm -hmm. which is higher than other publicly published results. Um, human performance in this task is 72.4%, so we still have room to grow, definitely. The other eval we'll take a look at is called Web Arena. Web Arena is an eval that measures how well AI agents navigate some common websites like e-commerce websites or social forum websites. So on this task, Kua gets 58.1%, again, higher than other publicly published results, but still falls short of uh, human performance. So is it useful? That's a tricky question, because OpenAI has been super cautious with this release. It is understandable as this is their first publicly available agent, and they had to put extra safety measures in place. Nonetheless, that means the AI essentially doesn't make any choices on its own, which is super time consuming, as the AI can't finish the task in the background without user confirmation. Okay, yes, that's great, let's do it. Operator is asking us before actually doing it. And in this case, I'm gonna say, let's do it. Oh, unfortunately, that <laughs> table is no longer available. Let's do it 15, okay. And if the user is supposed to wait around, the AI isn't as fast as an average human. So it is hard to find any meaningfully impactful use case for now. But when can you go ahead and try it out yourself? OpenAI Operator is currently available in the US and for the pro users, the tier that costs $200 a month. But it will slowly roll out to more jurisdictions and eventually to the plus users. What does this mean for OpenAI? Are they far ahead of every other AI lab? 
This feature is similar to Anthropic's computer use, which was introduced last year, and that was a more general approach, as the OpenAI operator is limited to the browser, but Anthropic's computer use would perform any task using a mouse and a keyboard and only receiving screenshots. This announcement further demonstrates OpenAI's unique strategy on their path to AGI. Google already has three agentic tools, projects Astra, Mariner, and Jules, and Anthropic has computer use API but they are not as focused on building a polished product out of the research projects. As we have seen with AI models like VO2 against Sora, OpenAI is taking the approach that any interesting research project should turn into a product available to average internet users. Uh, okay, so what I can do at this point, and I'm gonna just click this button called Take Control. At any point in time, a user can be, should be able to take control and give operator instructions, or tell a little bit more, guide a little bit more, etc. Et when you take over, it's very much just like a session with your local browser. It's completely private, operator cannot see. And this is one of the part of the reasons why I have to tell operator. Or it, you don't really have to. It can look at the last screenshot and try to guess it. But it's really good. It's sort of like if you and I were working together, I went off and did something, and I come back like, Ray, I completely messed it up. Can you fix this? <laughs> can I have to tell you that? <laughs> so in this case, I'm going to tell operator. Uh, Hey, go ahead, and I'm now I'm passing back the control to mm. operator. But other labs are more focused on the AI layer and are trying to delegate the application layer to their API users. So far, it's been a winning bet for OpenAI as they have built by far the most successful AI brand and product, ChatGPT. But that comes at the cost of pouring resources to polish products while others focus on the core technology. This year, as Greg Brogman, the co-founder of OpenAI has said, is the year of agents for OpenAI and they are going to ship at least a couple of more automation tools. Overall, 2025 seems to be a very exciting year for AI, and if you want to receive regular updates, don't forget to hit the sub button. My name is Puria, and we discuss emerging technologies here. Hope you liked the video, and have a great day.